This could be you guys. Combination cooking today, guys. What's up, YouTube? This is Cooking with Doug. And this time, I'm back again with my outside Ninja Wood Fire Grill and my inside Ninja Foodie One Lid. Today we're going to make some chicken birria tacos. Now big up to Jalisto. Again, they sent me a couple bottles for me to sample and I gave some away in a giveaway. I'm forever thankful. Now, I'm subscribed to them on TikTok and they did a simple meal with some chicken legs in their pressure cooker using a cup of this and a cup of water and shredded it. And I thought that'd be a great idea because guess what? We all can get like 12 chicken legs for like four to five dollars or even cheaper at any one of our supermarkets at any given time. What a great inexpensive way to make some fantastic tacos. And big ups to all my diabetics out there, low carbers, keto. This is, this is the uh, tortillas that I'm going to be using. But of course, use whatever ones you like. Either way, it's going to be fantastic. Now, these chicken legs have been seasoned and been sitting in my refrigerator for about four days. I was supposed to do this video two days ago, but I had some videos that I had to push out um, before I got to this one. This is supposed to be vacuum sealed. I hate these vacuum sealed bags with this little seal thing. They don't, just doesn't work well with me. But anyway, they're seasoned and cold smoked. I cold smoked them in the, um, the Ninja wood fire outside grill. And I'm going to show you what I did to do that just now. For the cheap, and we're not even going to use all of these. All right, guys, just finished washing my chicken. And as you see, I put a little slit in them so that the seasoning and smoke can get all the way in there for sure. I sprayed it with some oil with my Evo oil sprayer. Happened to have avocado oil in there, but olive oil will be fine. I'm just seasoning it with my favorite seasoning. This is my go-to. Pink salt, black pepper, and garlic. And that's it. We're going to cold smoke this for two hours, guys. And by the way, out here is about 69 degrees, which is perfect. You don't want it to, when you're cold smoking meat at least, you don't want it to be hot outside because, you know, that might, because we're, you know, we're doing this for two hours. That can potentially start slightly cooking the chicken and we, we don't want that. Got my pellets in. I didn't even show you what pellets I'm using. This is one of my favorites. It's the Kingsford garlic, onion, and paprika. I was going to use mesquite, but I thought that might have been too overpowering. And I don't want that. So this, I think this would be perfect. All right, let's get this on because it's 11 o'clock at night. Good. So exactly where I want it. Cold smoke. We have it on smoker. It's on cold smoke. And we want two hours. I'm starting to smell smoke, guys. Oh, I see some smoke, actually. This could be you at 11 o'clock at night. That's nothing but flavor, guys. All right. The countdown has begun. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I will be turning them over after an hour. So in 55 minutes, I'm going to turn them over. I forgot to mention that. So two hours, one hour, turn them over. Okay, so now that you've seen that, now I'm going to open it up and see if it smells like smoke. Oh, yeah, definitely does. Now... I know the cold smoke works because the first time I did a cold smoke and I put it in a Ziploc and that's why I have a vacuum sealer guys. I, for some reason for the life of me, I cannot zip up a Ziploc bag properly. I did it, I put it in my refrigerator. I did some chicken legs and thighs, put it in my refrigerator overnight. And when I opened up my refrigerator, the whole thing smelled like smoke. So cold smoke definitely works. 
And I would recommend if you're not super, super good at um, sealing with your Ziplocs, definitely vacuum seal it to keep all of that in. So you're going to have all the, all this smoke flavor is just in these chicken legs, right? It's just infused in there. So what I want to see now is when I pressure cook them, does it still maintain that smoke flavor? And that's what I wanted to, to get out of this video, as well as some great birria chicken tacos, because I've never made chicken birria yet. And then, but in this case, we're gonna pressure cook them. And this is a stainless steel insert, link will be in the description. I like to have the options. And by the way, this is about seven legs, if you want to know. We're gonna do one cup of this beta sauce. And we're gonna do one cup of water. I'm just gonna use chicken broth, but water will be fine. And make sure they're all swimming in it. Even rotate them if you want. All right. But it really doesn't matter. We're gonna shred it up and put it back in there anyway. So let's close the hood. Slide to the left. All right, let's get it on. It's already on pressure cook, as you see right there. We'll leave it at high pressure, of course. And I'm just gonna change it to 45 minutes, and that's it. You can do a natural release if you want, but I'm not. Let's go ahead and hit start. Make sure your valve is on seal. And I'll be back when it gets the pressure. Yo, that's crazy. I can smell a hint of smoke already. I smell the Jaliso uh, video sauce. To all my peoples that have been using pressure cookers for years, when you hear them clicks, you know when it's about to hit pressure. Like, it probably is going to hit right now. There you go. Yep. So, I'll be back in less than 45 minutes. And I have to run to the store real quick because I just realized I don't have any cilantro. So, but it's in walking distance, so I'll be back. And by the way, it smells absolutely fantastic in here now. It, it, it This is going to be good. And when it's done, I'm going to put the beta sauce in here. This is a gravy separator. And this will separate the fat from the true sauce. And we need the fat too because we're going to cook the, we're going to sear the um, tortillas in the fat. So it's good to separate it anyway. So link will be in the description. But the reason why I'm doing it is because I can't eat a lot of fat, a lot of like oily stuff in my sauce or gravies. Because I get inflammation, so this is one way to do it. I usually use this when I make like a pot roast or something, because there's like a lot of fat in the um, the gravy or whatever. So yeah, link will be in the description, like I said. All right, guys, we got about ten minutes left. I got red and white onions. I want a lot of onions in my birria taco today. Um, so we're gonna cut this up, well, shred it up with this gadget right here. Link will be in the description, by the way. This could be you, by the way. All right, guys, we are all done. I'll go ahead and shut it off. It's counting up, so that means it's at keep warm. I'm gonna release the pressure. Like I said, you can naturally release it if you want. Not necessary, though. There we have it, guys. And I'm gonna take it out, shred it, discard the bone. Nothing but flavor right there, guys. I wish you could smell it. Let's take this piece right here. Ooh, it's hot. Let's see if it tastes like smoke. You get it first. You got it? It does. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is gonna be so good. This is perfect. All right, time to Shred this chicken. Let's see if it passes the plastic fork test. It does. It does. You saw it. 
Okay, so we're down to the last one. I just wanted to show you. So I try and get rid of the the skin on the bottom. I don't want that, so I'll discard that. I have a little bag on the side. Yeah. This could be you guys. You seen how much it costs? And that was, I think I had 12 legs and I only made seven out of them. This could be you. All right. Get my pot out. First, I want to show you no leaking. And you see that ring on the top? That's the fatty grease and everything below is straight gravy, baby. So first, I'm going to create my dipping sauce. That's good enough. Dump my chicken in here, back in the pot. I'm put a probably medium sauteed. I'm gonna put my onions in. But before I put the onions in, let me go ahead and put the, the rest of the gravy in there. Up into that ring. A little bit before that. We're gonna need some more gravy um, for the tortillas as well. I'm going to put that on the plate. You'll see that in a second. Yeah, right about there. It's good. I want this to be moist and flavorful as much as possible. Now you can add your tacos, I mean, you can add your onions directly into your birra, um tacos, but I'm just going to incorporate it in the meat. That's one less thing I have to worry about. Either way, it's fine. I'm going to have this on for about two minutes. Let's give it a nice little mix. Get everything incorporated. It smells absolutely fantastic, guys. This is going to be nothing short of fantastic. Okay, guys, that's perfect. Give it a taste to see if it needs any salt. I added a pinch of salt, and that's it good to go so I'm gonna I could take this outside but I'm gonna transfer it to a container and we're gonna start building our tacos you know just because I'm gonna squeeze a lime in here just for some added flavor one full lime oh and by the way look out for bones little bones or whatever in there just give it a final mix and just look out for that for sure But we ready. And this plate right here is where I'm going to dip my uh, tortilla on both sides. And I use the remainder of the uh, bita sauce to put on this plate. And if I need more, I'll dip into, I'll, I'll dip into my dipping stash <laughs> in that bowl. All right, guys. I put some charcoal pellets in there. It's all fired up. It says add food. So let's build it. I gotta hurry up guys, it looks like it wanna rain out here. So like I said, I'm gonna dip my tortilla on both sides. It doesn't have to be perfect either. Something like this. And we'll do it for like, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds on this side. As soon as we flip it over, we're gonna start building. I gotta get my cheese. And it was on high and I dropped it down to medium. Oh, that's perfect right there, guys. 
Right, let's get our meat on there. This smells so good. And guys, I didn't have to use smoke on this part because, I mean, it's not really. But when I get my, um, when I load my cheese on there, I'm going to close it and just air fry it for like three, four minutes. Well, maybe not three, four minutes, but like two minutes or so. This is my cilantro, guys. I didn't chop it up very well, but that's okay because I love me cilantro. It doesn't matter. I eat the stems and all. Okay, now this is hot guys, so now you want to get your tongue, kind of just smash it down like this, and just let that go for a little bit and then we're going to flip it over. Alright, I'll go ahead and give it a flip. Look at that. That's a nice crust. Look at that, guys. Now, that could be you. I always say with these, the more you cook it, the better you get at them. <laughs> and by the way, it just finished like a light drizzle. I almost took it inside, but it stopped. But this was my just-in-case station. This is my charcoal grill. So I put it in there, and if it started to rain, I'll just put them in here and then close it. <laughs> but we're building them. The wood fire is doing a fantastic job, guys. Fantastic. And by the way, this is the cheese that I'm using. It's about two cups of cheese, 12 ounces. You'll need that. If you're making, I'm going to make five. So if you're making anywhere between, you know, five and ten you'll do this will make this one bag will make about ten of these or ten or twelve because you'll probably be using smaller tortillas than i am all right guys five is my limit because first of all i don't have that much um chicken left over and i do want some for another day because left over any type of meat is going to be fantastic i'm going to use some more of this cheese and we're just going to add it to there and just for fun, because I can, I'm going to preheat the um, wood fire with the charcoal um, pellets. And we're going we're gonna to add some cheese to the top and air fry it for about two, three minutes. It's just too easy, guys. It's too easy. This could be you guys. I'm ready to eat. We're going to bring this inside because it's, it's hot out here. It's about 80, 80-something 80 degrees out here. This could be you guys. It's paper towel time. Shout out to my viewers and subscribers that hit the like button way before my video is even finished. I appreciate that. All right, this is what we have right now. So guys, you saw the paper towel go up. It means it's time to eat. And it's right on time for lunch. I am starving. But let's take a look at this, guys. You see that? You see all of that? All right. You see that? You first. You got it? Mmm. Mmm. Too much flavor. Too much flavor right there. I'm waving my hand in the air, guys. No mas. It's too good. Too good. The sauce, the smoked chicken, everything. Everything is good. Mmm. I'm tasting some of the charcoal pellets. It's too good. You must try this. Mm. 
Mm -mm -mm. And the Jalisco sauce has a little kick to it, which I forgot to mention. Just a little bite, nothing too bad, but it has a bite to it. You do not need to add any pepper unless you like hot, hot sauce. Then you would add it, but you regular pepper or anything like that, anything mild, you don't need to add with this sauce. One last bite, guys. You got it. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Y'all take a swig with me, man. You first. Ah. Guys, that was super fun. Mad flavor. The cold smoke is the truth. It just, it didn't overtake it. It just, everything just blended in. Nothing overtook anything. Everybody worked together to get the job done, which is maximum flavor. So guys, I'll leave a link in the description to this Jalisco Bidea sauce. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. This is the real deal. Now, you might go to Target or Walmart, and you might see other sauce, and it's going to be cheaper than this, but it ain't this. Is what I'm saying. This is the real deal. Now, if you've seen Bidia Taco videos, to make this sauce is you got to blend up a whole bunch of stuff and boil it and blah, blah, blah. This just takes all of that out and makes it just super easy. So check that link out. Pick up one, pick up three. Of course, I'm going to leave a link in the description to the Ninja Woodfire grill slash smoker slash air fryer because as you can see it's absolutely fantastic it's a must-have for any backyard whether you have a small backyard or big backyard a backyard like mine with a ton of gadgets or a backyard with nothing but chairs doesn't matter this belongs in your backyard yep and of course i'll leave a link to my ninja foodie smart lid or one lid I call it that's absolutely fantastic you can pressure cook you can air fry and there's so much stuff you can do it's absolutely fantastic and it's big enough for whether it's one person or you're cooking for eight people or ten it got you covered so definitely must-haves period and the onion chopper I'll leave a link to that too but that's all I got guys enough talking I, I need to get on my bike and ride some of this off because I am full Either I'm going to go to sleep or I need to move around. <laughs> but this was absolutely fantastic, guys. Definitely try it for you and your family. Completely awesome. Hit like if you like it. Remember to subscribe. If anything, thanks for just even looking at my video.